minus 10. Five, mark, four, three, two, one. So guys, we're on the roof of the building awaiting the launch of the Minotaur off to, in Wallops Island. We're not sure if we're gonna get it. We're not sure if we can even straighten out the tripod. So now we just have to wait and look off into the sky to the south. It'll be about 15 to 30 seconds if we're gonna see it. Where are you? There it is. I see it. I see it. It's going up. It's a little bit of a contrail. I hope I caught that on video. There's a little bit of a contrail out there. Hey guys, good morning. It's about, uh, it's about 11 o'clock and we're gonna head down to the White House. I've got like a bunch of requests today to take me, take you guys to the FBI headquarters because you say it's closed. Hey, I'll show you, I'll show you. Um, anyway, we're gonna pass by the White House, head over to the FBI and then maybe get some lunch. Let's go. So we're coming up to the VP's house. I read today that the vice president is hosting a dinner party tonight for all the female senators, regardless of party. So it's a bipartisan dinner party, but only for the female senators. And they've all been invited here to the Naval Observatory where they're going to have a dinner party. Don't see any catering trucks at the moment, but uh, not sure if that would be needed. How many female senators are there anyway? Not that many, I don't think. I'm not even sure they're in town. Black squirrel, black squirrel. So yeah, there are a lot of black squirrels in Washington, D.C. First time I saw that, it kind of freaked me out. Because where I grew up, they were all basically brown or reddish color. And then up here, they're like gray ones and white ones and black ones, and you're just like, whoa. There's the vice presidential beehive. We see the bees going on. And here we go down Embassy Row again. So we're over here at the intersection of New Hampshire and M Street, M as in Mary. And just about a block up this way is a little tiny street. I believe it's called Ward Place. It's kind of outside the traditional naming structure of the DC streets. Kind of, I think it was like an alley at one time. But Ward Street's actually a little bit famous in the history of DC. So let's spin up over here and see what we can see. Ward Place, okay, not a street, but a place. W-A-R-D Place. And this is just at the intersection of New Hampshire and M. And back here on Ward Place, this is it, 2121 Ward Place is now a big, ugly office building. But about 100 years ago, it was a house. Actually, I think it's a post office. It is a post office. But this is where Duke, this is where Duke Ellington was born. This is the birthplace of Duke Ellington, the uh, musician and famous DC resident. Edward Kennedy Ellington, a native of Washington, DC, the preeminent composer, musical innovator, orchestra, and pianist. His musical style, harmonize the rich textural arrangements of his solo piano performances. This is where Duke Ellington was born. This was actually the house, I believe, of his mother-in-law. Er, so that would have been Duke Ellington's father's mother-in-law. That would have been Duke Ellington's grandmother's house. And this is where Duke Ellington was born. Today, a post office. <laughs> but 
little tiny bits of history. Yeah, don't know if we'll catch this light. A lot of hop cars out here today. Ooh, motorcycles too. We might have a motorcade. I don't know where. Somebody going to lunch? It's 11.30. motorcade cycles lining up over there. We could see a motorcade. You see all these DC police cars. They're the ones that clear the roads, not actually the Secret Service, but the DC police clears the roads. So they're lining up. up here? Not a whole lot. Pretty normal looking day. A couple tour groups out in the park. The protester was always here. Somebody was asking to see his tent. We can do a loop around that. One spotter on the route. We, Alex Navalny, the Russian guy, Russian guy, apparently had anti-hate protests, Korean protests, they're all kind of the same folks that are here every single day. Oops, can't go through their photo. Spotters up there. You know, and then, and then you know hang on a second, there's a bunch of spotters up there. I wonder what's going on back there. I wonder if the ellipse is open. Maybe there's something on the south lawn. Let's uh, let's go take a look because it's a little bit abnormal. All focused on the south lawn area. Okay, let's get in this bike lane and boogie to the other side of the White House. See what's going on. Let's see what we see. I was hoping there'd be new helicopter testing this week. With nobody in the White House, it'd be a perfect time to bring in the VH-92, which is the new helicopter. I don't see the guys on the roof anymore. Perfectly parked to interfere with bicycles. <laughs> so now we're over to the south side and well, don't see much. Now the spotters are looking the other direction. It's like they specifically don't want to look at me. Where is he? Uh, he's right up there. There he is, next to the flag on the right. Uh, he's not looking at this anymore. Bummer. Well, take a look at this, guys. The White House landing zone is now clear. The south lawn of the White House no longer has any construction materials. Uh, we saw those sod trucks yesterday. I believe they've resodded the grass there. We might see Marine One come down on the south lawn as early as tomorrow when they get back from the trip to Europe. So we're here on the ellipse and we're looking over at the south lawn. The other day uh, we saw those jersey barriers, but those look like they've been removed now and the grass looks, well, quite, quite green. Uh, I think they resodded. Let's see if we can go a little closer. Yeah. It looks like it's all new grass covering up whatever they were digging in that trench that they had been digging. So whether or not they're willing to land a helicopter on fresh sod, that's, well, that's the Marines' call. But I think the Secret Service will be quite happy to have the old landing zone back. Oh, 
Now, unfortunately, with the new landing zone, it means I'm not going to be able to show you the landings as close as I used to be able to. We're not going to be able to see uh, the president get on or off anymore. C'est la vie. Maybe I need to get a press pass. So they're up on the roof of the spotters. There's two of them working today. Um, they were looking this direction earlier. That guy's looking at me. And then there's uh, another guy usually there. Yeah, he, there he is. He's come out. I'm like, hey, that Penguin 6 guy is back. As, How do you know? He's got that same dirty hat he wears every day. Yeah, that's probably me. So there you go. We've got a clear landing zone. The Oval Office, somewhere over there in those trees. We're never going to see through those trees. But uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Where's the helicopter going to land? Okay, so we finished our live broadcast. Now we're in Black Lives Matter Plaza. And we're going to go and exchange bikes and then run home. Because I got to go do some dad stuff. And this bike, you know, this bike's battery has probably seen better days, given how much we've been riding. It's actually a pretty good bike. We've had a pretty good, pretty good run. But best to get a fully charged one to go up that hill. This one I can definitely feel doesn't have the full charge anymore. So we will. So that one is docked. Now, we'll spin over, grab another one. Okay. And away we go. Pony Express style, yeah? <laughs> Not quite as gracious as the Pony Express. But we've traded off one horse for another. So this is St. Matthew's Cathedral here in Washington, D.C. This is where final, the final funeral for John F. Kennedy was held, the final mass before he was taken to Arlington Cemetery was held here at St. Matthew's. This was also the first church that uh, Joe Biden attended after the inauguration on January 20th. Actually, it looks open. 